Hi guys, it's Trini here at John's Furniture Repair. Uh, today I've got a chair in the shop that's got a broken leg. It's a chair from Africa and uh, it's made of ebony and uh, mahogany. And it's a really interesting chair. I'll show it to you guys. It's different than anything that you really find in the stores here. And it's somebody who brought it over from Africa. So it's kind of a cute little chair, but uh, the seat is made of just strapped leather that is just nailed onto the bottom there. So it's pretty simple, but it's really cool. Uh, the pr main problem is the leg has broken right off, as you see here, and the back rung has snapped as well. So I'm gonna show you guys how we deal with that repair. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so I've got the leg in the vise here. So unfortunately, someone has uh, smushed my favorite Gorilla Glue everywhere. So I know this is not gonna be an, a great joint, but the first thing, regardless of what I'm gonna be doing for a joint, is I need to get this off. So what I'm gonna do is take a heat gun and uh, just soften up the glue so I can pick it out and get as much of this wood um, cleaned up around the side. It doesn't really matter in the middle because I'm gonna be drilling a dowel into the center of this, but uh, we do need to get it off the sides here. So I'm just gonna get my heat gun going and just really carefully work I mean, what you're trying to do when you're using heat instead of force is you're trying to remove the glue with as little damage to the actual original wood as you can. So you can kind of see it's just peeling off instead of, you know, chipping off and I don't have to take any wood with it. It actually got it slathered all over the chair here. So I'll just kind of rub it off as the heat works. I will drill for this side. So what I'm gonna actually end up doing, just so I can get my forcer bit started properly, is sawing these high middle pieces off right here. So I'm gonna saw those straight. Right there. I wanna kinda of keep that chunk, so I'm gonna to try to keep my dowel in this area. Cause maybe it will fit back together nicely, who knows. We'll check that out. But it'd be nice to have that wood there. Okay, so now that I've got a flat surface here, uh, I'm going to use a Forstner bit. out the sawdust. So there's my hole. I'm going to insert my 5 8 dowel in here. But before I do that, I want to position this on the chair. So let's take it over to the chair. Okay, so I've got all the glue out of this side as well. And I'm glad that I kept that little bump on this piece because this little bump fits right into this little notch here. So really nice placement for me to know where this goes. So it's not a great fit, but it's exactly where it goes. And uh, it kind of tells me where the front of this chair was and everything like that so I could probably try to get a little bit more glue out there but um, it's not going to do much more so what I need to do now is put in my um, 
dowel finder here. I'm just gonna shave this off so I can get a clear mark of where I need to drill. So this is the center punch. It's just a little, um, you can find where you need to drill your center of your dowel by just, you know, drilling one side, popping this guy in, lining up your other side and giving it a good whack with the hammer on the back. So I'll just back you guys up for that. Basically, I'm just going to line this up here and hopefully that I'll be able to see a mark right in here. Sometimes I've added a little bit of color because um, I think it's probably going to land right in the middle of that part. Uh, so I might just add a little bit of color on the tip of this so I can really see where it needs to go. Kind of paint the tip here with a bunch of color. Line up that tab in there the best that I can see that it goes and uh, give this chair leg a couple of wax. Just gonna make sure I've got it in there. Really hard to see, barely made a transfer, but I can see that it's right in this center point there. So I'm gonna get my 5 8 drill and I'll line it up as best I can with that little green marker. hand drill again try to keep my drill straight and I want to go right into the meat of this leg so I can see that there was you know where it broke there's a crack here too so I don't want to stop anywhere here I want to be into this solid stuff here that should be good So we're about down that far. So I am happy with that. So I'll just knock out the sawdust. Right there. Now I need to go find a 5 8 dill. Okay. Perfect. All right, so now we'll line this up into the groove here and see how it looks. Good, I'm happy with that. All right, so got the leg in. What I'm looking for is, you know, if it's leaning off to a side this way or that way. Um, it's got a little bit of a lead inward, but <laughs> so does the other leg. So I'm not sure if that's because of the angle, but I mean, it could, it could be when I glue it, I'm gonna maybe put a little bit of pressure on this way. So it's kind of leaning in this way. Okay, so next up is the dowel repair. Now, um, I'm not gonna be replacing this piece. If you look at the break, it's really long and uh, when I, whenever I see that, I'm confident that I can get this back in here and uh, get a lot of glue surface that I can re-glue this dowel back on. And these are handmade pieces uh, by an individual that, you know, they, they had their hands all over this. So I don't wanna replace something that I can repair satisfactorily. So what I do need to do though, is get this glue off of here. So back to the heat gun to scrape off some of this glue. And this one, I really want to have the whole surface clean so I get uh, new glue on all of the surfaces. Oh, I've got uh, this all cleaned up and this all cleaned up. Now I'm just going to look at how it fits here. It fits quite badly, which is fine. I kind of knew that was the case. It's quite splintered up and there's all kinds of things going on. So what I usually do for stuff that's pretty small in diameter and uh, needs pressure from pretty much all sides is I use hockey tape. 
So what I'll do is get my epoxy all over this area and I'll just actually strap the whole thing with hockey tape. And that is the best thing I've found, or electrical tape, actually. And I'll use epoxy in this dowel joint as well. So let's mix up a batch of that and get to gluing this together. Okay, so I've got my West System epoxy mixed and I've got some sawdust for a thickener and a filler. So I'm just gonna stir that up till I get my peanut butter. So one thing I like to do with my dowels before I uh, put them in is do uh, vertical lines where the glue can kind of squish out and there's not an issue with hydraulic pressure down there which can recrack your leg and also just not allow your dowel to be seated all the way. So what I usually do is take this over to the table saw and uh, line up my saw so this is the height of the blade that's in and I just run it in. Bzz, bzz, bzz and uh, then the glue's got lines to go through, so I'll show you guys how I do that. All right, so let's get some glue in there. And I can see that it was cracked on both sides here, so I'm gonna put actually quite a bit of glue in here and hope that when I um, well, not hope, I know that when I hit this down um, kind of quickly with the hammer, the dowel will push some of the glue into those grooves from the inside. And just the act of this being glued around a dowel as well will be, will help those cracks. So I'm gonna get some glue around the perimeter as well. Just in all those little areas that we cleaned all the old Gorilla Glue off of. So I'm going to pop this guy in here and I'm going to hit it down pretty quick. See how it's bouncing? And you can see the glue squishing out of those channels. I'm just going to keep hitting it until stops. Perfect. Grab some of this excess before it goes too far. So epoxy cleans up with uh, denatured alcohol. So after I'm done this, I usually just clean everything up that way. I'm going to get most of it off the stick here. Good. So now I'll just get some glue into the other side of the leg. Same way. All right, the other thing I'm gonna do before um, getting this back in is get this guy with some glue on it because I wanna have this in before this goes down because this is gonna kinda come down like this. So there's a little bit of glue in this hole here, so I'm gonna drill this out with a force of it. Good, so that's all clean in there now. And on this side, I'm just gonna scrape off some of the glue right here. And there will definitely be a lot of touch-ups on this chair, so I know that we're gonna be coloring here. And now come down onto this new area here. You know, all that glue squeezing out, that makes my heart happy. That means everything is just jam-packed full of epoxy which is awesome. I'll grab some of it before it goes too far again. It is, and I like where it's sitting. I'm gonna take my electrical tape here and I'm just going to strap epoxy and all, everything nicely together. So I'm gonna to try to get it all lined up, hold it in place and just start putting pressure on as I go around holding the dowel as I go, so it's not twisting. Okay. 
Good, so I've got that whole thing covered. I'm gonna do another round, it's gonna be tighter. And pressure up and down. That's okay if it breaks, just get another round. Okay, so what I wanna do is clamp this leg Um, down and onto this post. So I'm going to just bring a clamp underneath the chair. Now you want to be really careful when you're putting pressure on a leg like this. And you can see that it wants to pull out this way. So now I can add the clamp going back this way to keep everything lined up the way I want it to. Just enough to make it straighten out a little bit. Let me give it another squeeze. Just very little bits of pressure. All right, so I'm gonna use a walnut epoxy stick from Mohawk. And I just got a little chunk chuck, uh, cut off here. So I'm gonna peel this wrapper off and knead it together. So I'm just gonna roll this into a little snake wrap it around the break i'm a rhymer and just force it into the crack all the way around All right, so we'll let this dry overnight and get out of the clamps tomorrow and see how it looks for touch-ups. Okay guys, it's the next morning and we can take the clamps off. So let's get all these guys out of here. Take off this tape. So basically now we just have to do our cleanups on the epoxy putty and this broken dowel back here. And uh, the finish that we kind of wrecked a little bit as we were working. So I'm gonna use a, uh, a file to just smooth this out first and then I'll sand it. So I'm just gonna get the general shape of the file. Great. So now I'm going to get some 120 paper. Let's put the profile here. I don't want to change how the chair looks. I'm just going to be careful I don't sand too much. Good. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay, now the bottom sanded, I'll flip the chair over. And you can see the top needs a bit more. I'm just going to use a Timbermate water-based putty here. And fill in all the voids. I'm going to leave it pretty heavy on here just because I need to do some shaping in that void. So that'll need to dry pretty much all day. Okay, 
for the front leg, I can get to doing the touch-ups. So I'm going to sand the finish all, you know, all around this piece here because it was damaged. I'm going to use a 180 to do that. Just divide them. There we go. looks like maybe a shellac. Okay, now that we've got it all sanded, I'm just gonna dust off the leg. And this is some shellac I mixed up a while ago. To put a coat on the leg, nowhere else. On this beautiful eucalyptus wood. And once we get the shellac on, we'll be able to see how we need to touch up. The epoxy putty in that crack looks like it needs to be here. We'll need probably two or three coats and this stuff dries almost instantly. So I'm just gonna hit it again right away up top here with the second coat of shellac. Okay, so I've mixed a bit of burnt ember with Cordovan mahogany to get a reddish orange color here that I'm looking for. Okay, so this is dried for most of the day today. So I'm just gonna give it a sand. Hopefully it's dry all the way through. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a seal. You can definitely see you know, where the putty is and where the epoxy is for the colors. So what we're gonna do is paint those areas out first. And I'm gonna be using a blonde uh, toner with the paintbrush just to paint out those areas. So now that those areas are, have, I have all the dark areas painted out, I'm actually going to mist over the blonde color just to kind of fade uh, everything in. Get the other side too. And then what we'll be putting and misting over top is just a more concentrated yellow, which is the uh, natural light oak color, which will more closely match up to this yellow. But this opaque white is necessary just to mute all the dark. Miss that. Side. 
Okay, so we've got the medium brown walnut toner. That's just going to add in a little bit more of an orangey brown kind of, yeah, that's what I wanted. Good, so I'll just give a little sealer. So I'm just gonna buff it in here. All nice and smooth. All the areas that we put a new finish on. Have to fill up those grains with finish again. I'm going to take my same top coat that I used on the rung and just going to give it a and, uh, that dowel goes through a good uh, five inches, six inches uh, here right through the center post so that will be nice and strong and uh, this guy's got the repair uh, here, right across. It's got a nice long break that we glued back together, so it's gonna be strong as well. I mean, I don't think that people should be putting their feet on these parts anyways. They're pretty thin uh, in construction. But anyways, it's back to good now. So I'm just going to give it a beeswax and call it finished. Thanks for uh, watching me on this one, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other videos.